Studies show the protection provided by COVID-19 vaccines may fade over time. That's why Germany has announced a booster jab campaign. The UK and France too. Israel is already pressing ahead. We're the first people in the world who are doing this. We're in the middle of a big spread of infection, and it's something that everyone can do. But the World Health Organization says supplies should go to poorer countries. Is a third vaccination dose in wealthy nations really justified? Welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Rob Watts in Berlin. Now, there's clearly vast inequality in the way that coronavirus vaccines have so far been distributed around the world. While many wealthy nations have jabbed more than half of their populations, billions of people in poorer nations are unprotected. In Kenya, less than 3% of the population has been even partially vaccinated against COVID-19. DW correspondents Mario Muller and Felix Moringa sent this report from Gatanga. A family in grief. In less than two weeks, three of its members have died of COVID-19. It went very fast. James Mungi tells us he buried his father just a few days ago and his grandmother the week before. Today, he's burying his uncle. We are traumatized because it's not so easy. Some people, you are with them two weeks ago, they had no issue. Then all of a sudden, in a span of less than 10 days, they're all gone. At his father's grave, he pays respects before joining his family at his uncle's funeral. James is struggling to understand what has happened. So too is his aunt. My heart is in a lot of pain. I don't know what to say. If people had gotten the vaccine, I think even those who were sick could have healed. The family is convinced their loved ones could have survived had they been vaccinated. With many rich nations having inoculated more than half of their populations and even started to roll out third booster jabs, poor countries are lagging behind. The WHO says the vaccination rate is as low as 1% across the continent. Health experts say this vaccine inequity is also a moral issue. We cannot start administering booster shots when some of us don't even know if we will be able to get a second shot. It's just um, a really great injustice and it's unfortunate that WHO's hands are also tied. Many Kenyans we meet in Nairobi agree. They have the obligation to help, so I don't think if it's something bad, they can do it since we all need the vaccine. They have protected their people and their citizens, but they have neglected these needy countries. If you find out that we are not vaccinated, then the rate at which the virus will be spreading, it will be very high. And I think that's the reason as to why most of we Africans are dying. At the burial, James Ndwati, a member of parliament, tells the family he did everything he could to purchase vaccines for Kenyans. We put in money to buy vaccines. But one of the challenges of the vaccine is that they are not available anywhere. Globally, Africa has been, African citizens have been treated as second rate uh, citizens. The surviving family members were tested negative, but they're still worried because they don't know when and if they'll get vaccinated. If vaccinated, Granny might have died because she was old, but the other two could have survived. Until low-income countries get their fair share of vaccines, family tragedies like Monica's will continue to happen. Well, let's speak to Maduka Pai, who is a professor of epidemiology at McGill University in Canada. Thanks for joining us on the COVID-19 special. I mean, given that so many people are unvaccinated in less wealthy nations. Is the idea of providing third jabs to people who are already protected to some extent, is that just the wrong thing to do? 
Um, absolutely, I believe that is the case. I think we have to understand that um, the vaccine supply is almost like a zero-sum game right now. If rich nations have already procured millions or billions of doses and they are pre-ordered for booster doses, the amount of vaccines available for other countries is very, very limited. So in that situation, it's literally like stealing away from our poorer countries that desperately need the vaccines and holding it to ourselves, which is exactly what is happening right now. And we end up with a situation of 3.5 billion people, um, half the world's population with not even a single dose covered, while the G20 and the G7 pretty much have procured nearly 90% of the vaccine supplies. The existing vaccines work quite well with the current uh, dosing without boosters, except in a small set of uh, people, such as people on organ transplantation and immunosuppressed. In them, a third booster makes sense, but not as a population-wide strategy, no. But we have seen the impact that new variants can have, particularly Delta. So aren't governments right, even in wealthy nations, to be seeking to protect their citizens against newer versions of coronavirus? So if you look at uh, how many million people have died because of the Delta variant in India, you get a sense of what the Delta variant can do in a partially vaccinated or completely unvaccinated country. What happened in India, then happened in Nepal, then happened in Bangladesh, then happened in Indonesia, now Vietnam, now Iran, it never ends. And in a population where only 2% of the population is covered by a, by a vaccine, like in Africa, the Delta variant will decimate the country or the continent. That's exactly what happened in India. We may have lost nearly four to five million people in India um, due to COVID pandemic. So we know how devastating Delta can be. And here we have a population in rich countries where 80% uh, might be vaccinated. So getting an additional boost protection uh, increasing the efficacy by a few percentage points in rich countries versus taking those vaccines and vaccinating completely unvaccinated vulnerable people. There is not even a question. The public health map clearly tells you vaccinating the unvaccinated is always more impactful than boosting somebody who is already pretty much protected. Uh, so it's your view that as long as there are people in the world who would want a vaccine and have not had it, we shouldn't be offering boosters to anyone? Uh, except the immunocompromised, the, the seriously immunocompromised people, folks like in transplantation. That's the group for which the US FDA just announced last week that it's okay to give the third boosters, but not on a population-wide basis. And that's where my biggest concern is. If Canada, America, Germany, Israel, we all start vaccinating ourselves again and again and again, we have taken away a giant share of the vaccine supply away from the hands of low- and middle-income countries. That's the brutal yeah. reality. Do you, do you, ha do you have any hope? Sorry to interrupt you, but do you have any hope that, that those vaccines that are maybe surplus in some countries can be redistributed? Is that, is that realistic? I'm, I'm quite despondent. I'm quite despondent. I'm not seeing any enlightened leadership from the G7 or the G20 or any rich nation for that matter. We've, I think we've lost the plot uh, on global solidarity. I think global solidarity is a lie. It's a kind of buzzword people throw around, but we really don't mean it in our actions. OK. Maduka Pai from McGill University. Thank you very much for joining us on the COVID-19 special and bringing us your insights. Thank you for having me. And now it's your turn to ask the questions. Let's hear from our science correspondent, Derek Williams. What do we know about whether vaccines reduce the risk of long COVID? Long COVID is a, a catch-all name describing a wide range of persistent complaints in people who went through a COVID-19 infection. Most estimates say the condition affects at least one in 10 people who survive the disease. So we're talking uh, millions of sufferers worldwide. Even though long COVID is often associated with, with patients who had severe COVID-19, um, many who had much milder cases also just can't seem to shake it for, for months afterwards. So what does the data say about breakthrough infections in people who've been fully vaccinated? They're rare and breakthrough patients usually experience mild symptoms 
But since even a mild infection apparently sometimes triggers long COVID too, how much of a threat does it pose to someone who's been vaccinated but subsequently gets COVID-19 anyway? Um, are they at less risk of developing the syndrome? Many of the experts I read think that long COVID will indeed prove to be less common in, in breakthrough patients, but their opinions also seem to be based at the moment on kind of a lot of guesswork. Uh, there hasn't been much research published on the topic so far because long COVID studies, by their very nature, are going to be long term. And because even with the Delta variant causing new spikes of infection in many places, um, breakthrough infections still remain much more the exception uh, than the rule. But the pile of evidence is slowly growing. Um, one small scale study out of Israel didn't rule out long COVID in breakthrough cases. Um, it tracked around 1,500 fully vaccinated healthcare workers for about three months and identified 39 breakthrough infections in the group. Um, around one in five of those breakthrough patients still complained of lingering symptoms after six weeks. But that's just one small piece in, in what promises to be a very complex puzzle. And just finally, more and more people are taking up walking as part of their daily exercises because of the coronavirus pandemic. According to a Forza survey, 52% of respondents in Germany, at least, said they have taken a stroll more frequently now than before the pandemic. In light of closed gyms, the study also found that exercise at home has become more popular too.